a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. XXX Tentacion. Dizaduane Ricardo Onfroy, known professionally as XXX Tentacion, was an American rapper, singer, and songwriter. Born in Plantation, Florida, Onfroy spent most of his childhood in Lauderhill. He began writing music after being released from a juvenile detention center and released his first song on SoundCloud in June 2013, titled, News Slash Flock. He was a popular figure in SoundCloud rap. A trap scene that takes elements of lo-fi music and harsh 808s. Well known for his, depressing, and at times devastating, music that brought attention to mental health, Onfroy employed styles and techniques that were unconventional in hip-hop during his career, such as distortion and heavy guitar-backed instrumentals drawing inspiration from third-wave emo. Onfroy rose to fame with the release of his song, Look At Me. He released his debut album, Seventeen, on August 25, 2017. The album debuted at number two on the US Billboard 200. Selling 86,000 album equivalent units the first week, the album received a positive response from critics, some of which lauded the album for its personal narratives and diverse musical style. On August 15, 2018, the album was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America. On Freud's second album, was released on March 16, 2018. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, with its singles, Sad. Changes, and, Moonlight, all reaching the top 20 of the Billboard Hot 100. The album was certified, Platinum, by the Recording Industry Association of America on August 7, 2018. On June 18, 2018, Onfroy was shot and fatally wounded at the age of 20, in a robbery at a motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach, Florida. The attackers fled the scene in an SUV after stealing a bag from Onfroy. All were arrested and are awaiting trial for the murder. In the week following his murder, Onfroy's highest charting single, Sad, went from 52nd to 1st on the Billboard Hot 100, making Onfroy the first artist to top the Hot 100 posthumously in a lead role since the notorious B.I.G. with Mo Money Mo Problems, in 1997, Onfroy left behind what Rolling Stone called, a huge musical footprint. Due to his impact on his young fanbase and his popularity during his career. Early Life Jizzard Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy was born on January 23, 1998, in Plantation, Florida, to Jamaican parents, Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy and Cleopatra Bernard. He had three siblings with one being half, shared paternally. Onfroy was mainly raised by his grandmother Colette Jones, due to his mother's financial situation, in Pompano Beach, Florida, and Lauder Hill, Florida, when Onfroy was six years old. He tried to stab a man attempting to attack his mother and was eventually put into a youth program before being forced to live with his grandmother. Onfroy's interest in music initially started after his aunt persuaded him to begin attending school choir and later church choir. He was soon kicked out of the school choir after attacking another student. Onfroy attended Margate Middle School from which he was later expelled after a series of physical altercations. He was subsequently enrolled into Sheridan House Family Ministries by his mother for over six months. Onfroy began to listen to new metal, hard rock and rap during his time at Sheridan House Family Ministries, which led to him to learn the piano and guitar. Onfroy attended Piper High School until he dropped out in the 10th grade. He described himself as a misfit during that time, citing how quiet he was despite being popular and regularly involved in physical confrontations. Onfroy was not the athletic type and said that he was insecure and depressed during his time in high school. Career Beginnings and, Look at Me, 2013-16 Onfroy's career as a music artist began in June 2013 after the release of his song, News Flock. 
While in juvenile detention for gun possession charges, own Froy met Stokely Cleven Goldborn, another artist known as Ski Mask the Slump God. During their time together, own Froy and Goldborn became good friends and began freestyling, recalling his time in detention. Own Froy said that he was respectful to the officers and staff and used to protect people from other inmates, including a homosexual cellmate whom Onfroy later attacked for allegedly staring at him while he was changing clothes. That same year, following his release from a juvenile detention center, Onfroy and Goldborn met up again under the belief they were going to commit a string of home invasions for monetary gain though Onfroy eventually bought a blue snowball microphone and began recording music, which convinced Stokely to do the same. After Onfroy adopted the moniker XXX Tentacion, he uploaded his first official song, called, Vice City, on SoundCloud, speaking on his decision to abandon a life of crime for music. Onfroy said that he felt like music was a better outlet for his feelings and then girlfriend Geneva Jalair was someone who helped him realize that. He would then continue uploading small snippets of his songs that he would either soon release or keep unreleased. Onfroy eventually joined Ski Mask the Slump God's group Very Rare, before breaking off and starting the members only collective, which Ski Mask then also joined. The word, Tentos Yawn, in his stage name is the Spanish word for, temptation. Onfroy released his first official extended play, called The Fall. On November 21, 2014, Onfroy released one collaboration album with Ski Mask The Slump God, called Members Only Volume 1 before releasing Members Only Volume 2 in 2015 with several members of the growing Members Only Collective. In 2016, he released the EP Willy Wonka Was a Child Murderer, with music heavily inspired by heavy metal and indie music. In 2016, Onfroy quit his job as a call center operator due to his growing music career and moved in with rapper Denzel Curry. In July 2016, Onfroy was arrested and charged with robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. After posting $10,000 bail, Onfroy continued to work on his debut independent album, Bad Vibes Forever, which had a slated October 31, 2016, release date. The album missed the release date and was delayed due to Onfroy being arrested in early October on charges of false imprisonment witness tampering and aggravated battery of his pregnant girlfriend. Released from prison, Revenge, 17, and A Ghetto Christmas Carol, 2017. In 2017, Look At Me, Gained Traction, peaked at number 34 on US Billboard Hot 100 in the top 40 of the Canadian Hot 100. The single helped him gain more popularity due to accusations of Canadian rapper Drake using a similar rap flow in his then unreleased song, Kmt, that he previewed at a concert in Amsterdam with feature guest appearance from British rapper Giggs. Despite Onfroy being in jail during, look at me's initial breakthrough. Major label scouts began offering six-figure contracts and Onfroy eventually signed for Empire Distribution for lower royalty rate full creative control and a smaller upfront payment. After his release from prison on April 18, 2017, he released three more songs on SoundCloud. In an interview with Whip, Onfro announced that he was working on the studio albums Bad Vibes and 17, as well as a mixtape. I Need Jesus. In an interview three days after his release from prison, Onfro said to Double XL, I got this really, really, really good album called 17. That's more of an alternative. Rand B Sound, then I've got this mixtape called I Need Jesus, which is mainly rap and the underground sound I did. Onfroy announced his first nationwide tour on April 28, 2017. The tour, titled, The Revenge Tour, had 26 tour dates overall and generated much media coverage included that of a rapper being assaulted, Onfroy being knocked out after an altercation on stage, an audience member being stabbed, Onfroy being thrown into a barricade by security, and Onfroy punching a fan.
He announced the cancellation of the rest of the tour dates due to his cousin being shot on June 24, 2017. Though the final tour date in Broward County, Florida, still went ahead and was later streamed on the Watch to Music app, Onfroy was named as the 10th pick on XXL's 2017 freshman class. Onfroy released his debut commercial project, called Revenge, on May 16, 2017. The mixtape consists of eight previously released songs. The collaborative mixtape, Members Only, Volume 3, with Members Only, was released on June 26, 2017. Onfroy's first opener for a major act happened when Rapid Dram brought Onfroy out at a concert in the Staples Center during Kendrick Lamar's Damn Tour. He released his debut album, 17. On August 25, 2017, the album debuted at number two on the US Billboard 200, selling 86,000 album equivalent units first week. The album received a positive response from critics some of whom lauded the album for its personal narratives and diverse musical style. On September 3, 2017, Onfro announced that Bad Vibes Forever, his second album, was still in production. Seventeen gave Onfroy's seven songs, Jocelyn Flory's, Revenge, Fuck Love, Everybody Dies in Their Nightmares, Depression and Obsession, Save Me, and Carry On, that debuted in the Billboard Hot 100 at number 31, 77. 41, 54, 91, 94 and 95, respectively. Jocelyn Flores became Sxtentation's highest charting song since, Look At Me, which peaked at 34. Onfroy then had his ninth song to chart on the Billboard Hot 100. In turn with his being featured on Kodak Black's song, Roll In Peace, taken from Project Baby 2. The song debuted at 52 and peaked at 31, matching. Jocelyn Flores. On September 12, 2017, Onfroy released his first official music video for his 2016 song, Look At Me, as well as sharing a music video with his 2015 song, Riot. The song generated controversy hours after being posted due to the video depicting a white child being hanged by Onfroy, as another black child observed. The music video was removed from YouTube months later. On Freud's label, Bad Vibes Forever signed a distribution deal with Capital Music Group, subsidiary Caroline, on October 19, 2017. The deal, reportedly worth $6 million, was for one album only. Shortly afterwards on October 25, 2017, Onfroy announced he was terminating his contract with Caroline despite a representative confirming he was still signed. Two days later, he announced that he was retiring due to negativity and backlash though some publications noted that Onfroy made similar statements before and not followed through. On October 30, 2017, Onfroy announced that he would make music again if fellow Broward rapper and former best friend, Ski Mask the Slump God, was his friend again. Later, Onfroy answered a fan's question on Instagram Live about his retirement, saying, Am I quitting? Yes, I'm quitting, I don't know for how long. But I'm just not going to make music right now. Onfroy previewed new music on November 2, 2017, signaling a return to making music. Onfroy announced a new album titled Bad Vibes Forever on November 17, 2017. Speaking on the album, Onfroy said, It will be a mix of genres you have seen me dabble with. If you are not a fan of me this is not an album for you, it is for core fans only. The album title shares its name with his label. On December 11, 2017, Onfroy released the A Gitter Christmas Carol EP on SoundCloud, a day before his hearing for witness tampering charges. Onfroy announced that he was preparing three albums to be ready for 2018, and after being released on house arrest, he announced the titles of all three albums, Skins, Bad Vibes Forever and YouTube Channel and Album, 2018. Onfroy began to use his longtime YouTube channel, XXXTentacion, previously used to upload music, to upload gaming videos and vlogs. The channel has over 11 million subscribers. 
and 1.9 billion total views as of September 2018. On January 22, 2018, Own Froy announced on Instagram that he and New York rapper Joey Badass had been creating a project together, and the two released a freestyle to the song, King's Dead, on SoundCloud on March 9, 2018, in preparation for the collaboration. The XXX Tentacion YouTube channel uploaded the video, Here Helping Hand Challenge. On the same day, the video included Onfroy donating musical instruments, video game consoles, and other gifts to a foster home. Shortly afterwards, Onfroy declared his album had finished and he was preparing to release it, but would only do so after the hashtag Helping Hand Challenge reached 1 million mentions on Instagram. Onfroy released his first single of 2018 on February 2, titled, Shining Like the North Star. He was also featured on longtime collaborator and producer Ronnie J's track, Banded Up. Onfroy released the song, Hope, on his SoundCloud account on February 21, 2018. Dedicated to the victims of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, which had occurred in Parkland, several miles north of Onfroy's native plantation. Onfroy announced that he was releasing two songs at midnight on March 2, 2018, both the first singles for his upcoming album. The lead single for, Sad, was released several hours later alongside, Changes, which features fellow 2017 XXL, freshman, Pnby Rock. Sad, debuted at number 17, becoming his highest charting song in the United States, and eventually peaked at number one after Onfroy's death before releasing its official music video on June 28. Moonlight, and Hope, also charted after his death, peaking at number 13 and 70. Onfroy announced the release date for his second studio album, on March 12, 2018. He shared the 18-track track list with features from Joey Badass, Travis Barker and Pinby Rock, was released on March 16, 2018. Question Mark debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, becoming on Froy's first number one in the country, losing out with his debut album 17 due to Lil Uzi Their Love Is Rage 2, shortly following the release of Onfroy signed a new album deal with Empire Distribution for his third solo album worth $10 million. Posthumous Releases On June 21, 2018, the first posthumous song featuring Onfroy was released, Ghostbusters, with Trippy Red featuring Quavo and Ski Mask the Slump God, and was uploaded on Trippy Red SoundCloud. Double XL released a series of freestyles that Onfroy performed as a part of his 2017 Freshman Cipher. Ugly God released a song titled Teardrop on June 22, 2018, which featured Onfroy's aforementioned unreleased Cipher verses as a tribute to Onfroy on August 31, 2018. Houston rapper Source Walker released his Drip God mixtape which featured a collaboration with Onfroy titled, Voss, produced by Carnage. On August 17, 2018, I Love McConan announced a collaboration between Lil Peep and Onfroy titled, Falling Down, a reworking of, Sunlight on Your Skin, made by McConan and Peep. The new version features verses by Onfroy that he recorded after Peep's death to pay tribute to Peep. The single was officially released on September 19, 2018. On September 27, 2018, Kanye West announced Onefroy will be a featured artist on his ninth studio album, Yangi, the same day. It was reported that Onefroy will also be a featured artist on Lil Wayne's 12th album, Tha Carter V, which was released the next day. Onefroy was featured on the song, Don't Cry. Death. On June 18, 2018, Onfroy was leaving the Reva Motorsports motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach, Florida and at approximately 3.55 p.m. Onfroy was blocked from exiting the car park by a black Dodge Journey SUV. Two armed men exited the SUV and approached the rapper while he was sitting in the driver's seat. A brief struggle occurred, and the armed men reached inside Onfroy's vehicle, stole a small Louis Vuitton bag and shot Onfroy multiple times. 
The shooters fled the scene in their black Dodge Journey SUV and Onfroy was transported by paramedics to the nearby Broward Health North Hospital in Deerfield Beach, where he was pronounced dead. Onfroy's death was announced by the Broward County Sheriff's Office at approximately 5.30 p.m. Suspect Dedrick Devonshay Williams of Pompano Beach was arrested two days after the shooting. Shortly before 7 p.m. held in the Broward County Jail, he is charged with first-degree murder without premeditation. In the weeks following the event, three different people were arrested for their actions involved with the event, including trigger man Michael Botright. In his will, Onfroy named his mother Cleopatra and brother Aidan as the sole beneficiaries of his estate. Onfroy's future child, that his girlfriend at the time of his death was pregnant with, was not named in the will as the will was written before the pregnancy. Funeral An open casket service for Onfroy took place at the Bant Center in Sunrise, Florida on June 27 where fans were allowed to pay their respects. His private funeral took place on June 28 where rappers Lil Uzi Vert and Lil Yachty and singer Erica Badu were among the attendees. He was entombed in a mausoleum at Gardens of Boca Raton Memorial Park, Boca Raton, Florida. Legacy Well known for his, depressing, and at times devastating, music that brought attention to mental health, Onfroy employed styles and techniques that were unconventional in hip-hop during his career, such as distortion and heavy guitar-backed instrumentals drawing inspiration from third-wave emo. This influenced artists such as Lil Pump, Trippy Red, Ski Mask the Slump God, Smoke Pope and 669 in with the grungy vocals and lo-fi mixing of his early career. He was also credited with giving artists their first taste of fame and helping them with their careers through features and co-signs. Onfroy left behind what Rolling Stone called, a huge musical footprint, due to his impact on his young fanbase and his popularity during his career. Given his immense influence only to die young. The article compared his cultural impact with that of Richie Valens and Darby Crash. This success as, a zeitgeist grabbing, industry defying, boundary destroying phenomenon, is, overshadowed. By his reported abuse of his pregnant ex-girlfriend, however, and the latter is the focus of his life story. Nonetheless, the article contends that despite media attempts to suppress him, Onfroy's impact on music will be felt for years to come, and his recordings have helped signal a new era of post-streaming, post-genre teenagers. Onfroy's personal life and history are also noted as prominent parts of his legacy. An article in The Guardian described his legacy in more critical terms, stating that H.E. will be remembered mostly for the unusually cruel violence he committed on vulnerable people, particularly his ex-girlfriend, crimes for which he never expressed remorse, according to the article. His music, reflected a life lived with disregard for humanity, both other people's and his own, and rarely attempted to engage in bravado or bragging, instead focusing on mental illness, suicide, extreme misogyny and a prevailing feeling of numbness. An article in The Atlantic expressed similar criticisms, though it also noted that Onfroy reminded young fans in particular that their hurt was valid, but that it did not form the sum total of their lives, and that he gave voice to their insecurities. Contrasting these elements of his legacy, the article acknowledged that though he spent his career encouraging young fans to recognize their greater worth, Onfroy's legacy is nonetheless characterized by the trauma he both experienced and caused. In the Washington Post, Chris Richards commented on Onfroy's complicated legacy, contrasting how he encouraged his fans to find hope in the fog of their despair, but bragged enthusiastically about the joy he felt in brutalizing others. According to Richards, Onfroy's music brought solace to the depressed, while validating the sort of violence he practiced and legitimized the pain of his fans while erasing the suffering of domestic violence victims. 
Onofroy's music serves as an example for Richards of how a hateful song might normalize such feelings in hateful people, which contributes to the profound paranoia in society about the hatred that might be in the minds of others. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?